Hi, everybody, and welcome to round four of the Wood Green Invitational. We are going to be looking at uh, five games today, and here they are. Uh, so this tournament is being played in Stafford, um, and it's giving people a chance to play over the board chess and uh, go for IM norms and GM norms. Um, the IM norm, you need five out of nine in this tournament, and the GM norm, you're going to need seven out of nine. So uh, no easy ask in this field. Um, but to update you on the scores, um, we've got uh, Ravi Haria, who is doing extremely well on three out of three. Now, Ravi is um, already an IM. He's been having some fantastic results recently. Um, and so he'll be looking for the GM norm on uh, seven out of nine. So he's got three out of three. So if my maths is right, he's going to need four out of the next six games. Today, he is up against Tamas Fodor. Now, Tamas is also doing fantastically well. He has uh, two and a half out of three at the moment. Um, and so those two are playing this morning with Tamas with the white pieces. Um, then uh, Grandmaster Mark Hebden is having a really nice performance, actually. He's on two out of three. Um, and uh, and it's his, his, well, like lots of them, it's, it's his first tournament um, since uh, being able to play over the board again. Um, and uh, so, so it's really nice for him to come with such good form. Um, and the other one I really wanted to highlight to you is Marcus Harvey. Uh, and so Marcus is actually playing Mark today. Um, and Marcus um, is very close to being an IM. Uh, so he has had a great start. He's on two out of three at the moment. And he needs to get to five out of nine for his I am norm. And I believe if he gets it, um, that gets him the title. Uh, so, um, yeah, so good luck to all of those players. Uh, so Hebs is white against Marcus Harvey. We're also going to be following Derek Sharney against Fitzsimons. We're going to follow Grandmaster Matthew Turner against junior player Jonah Willow. And also uh, Scottish International Master Andrew Greet against um, Welsh FIDE Master Jonathan Blackburn. We've got uh, some really good games lined up for you today. I'm going to be joined in a minute by Grandmaster Matthew Sadler. He is at the moment on his park run. Um, okay, let's start off with uh, Fodor against Ravi Harrier. And um, okay, so we've got um, d4, e6, e4. So Tamas has transposed it into a French defense uh, and he's playing knight c3, the winner. We'll see how that develops. I'm just going to check out the openings of each of the five games first of all, and we can see what we've got in store. We had quite a few e4 games yesterday and um, lots of Italian games, uh, which was nice. Let's see. Uh, board two hasn't started yet. Let's see. Ah, Matt Turner um, is playing against Jonah Willow and Matthew Turner is playing the English. Now, Matthew Turner uh, is actually very variable in his openings. He can play a whole load of different stuff and you never quite know what you're going to get with him. Um, and he knows a lot of unusual lines. Um, so he's quite hard to prepare for. Uh, so, but Jonah's meeting it in a symmetrical fashion at the moment. Okay. And let's see the next one. Uh, we have Andrew Greet against Jonathan Blackburn. So let's see how this one started off. D4, neither six, C4, G6. G3, so a Fianchetto line for both sides. Fairly quiet start. These games can uh, liven up a bit once the sides have got their pieces developed. OK. 
Okay, so let's see how things develop there. Now, Jonathan Blackburn, of course, is the Welsh online champion. Um, and we saw him recently playing in the British online championships as well. He was gunslinger there. Okay, and then uh, this big game, Mark Hebden against Marcus Harvey. Now, Mark's playing something actually, I think it's a little bit unusual for him uh, because he traditionally always played uh, lines with an early knight c3 um, and bishop f4 um, and attack that way. He's gone knight f3, c4 and c6, e3, bishop f5, knight c3 and e6 from Marcus. Okay, now I, I read this morning that the last two times these players have played, then Marcus has has managed to win those games. Um, so Hibs might be trying to deviate from um, from how those previous games went. Okay, so let's nip back to top board. Um, and uh, Ravi is playing knight f6. They're both still playing pretty fast. So uh, I, I guess not surprises so far. Um, and... Uh, so now Tamas could play um, something like bishop g5. That's a, a normal type of move here. Um, and what I would hope we get into, I don't know, I don't suppose we'll get into this, but what I would hope we would get into this um, Alakine Shattard attack with uh, bishop g5 and h4, because um, I always find that one a very interesting opening. Okay. So... Let's see. Uh, so, uh, Borna Derek Shani is um, a junior player, um, and yesterday played quite a a quiet system, uh, Fianchettoing bishops, a sort of kind of ratty ish system. Um, David Fitzsimmons has met knight f3 with d5 here. We'll see how that one develops. Um, so, yeah, so it's 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 uh, fairly long games uh the the session can last up to about four hours um so it's an hour and a half uh initial starting time okay and so let's see matt turner um so it stayed symmetrical for a little bit and uh, uh now but jonah is going to fianchetto his king's bishop here Aha, uh -huh. and Andrew Greet is going for the double fianchetto. Uh, so one fianchetto, not enough, going for the double fianchetto. And uh, John the Backlone's played an interesting move, queen b6. Um, and I'm just trying to remember, I think we saw him play that kind of move in the British as well. Um, and yeah, so, so he will... Um, I, I think develop then the queen side pieces next. Um, and Andrew's going to look for bishop b2, um, probably get his rooks out, and maybe play for e4 in a minute. Uh, just looking at results from um, previous days, and um, I was going to check out... Uh, what the top, who the top people have played. So Ravi has already played Jonathan Blackburn, um, Jonah Willow, and David Fitzsimmons. So he's got, um, he's, he's saved off his grandmasters so far. So he's playing, the first grandmaster he's playing uh, today is Tamas. Then he plays Matthew Turner in round six and Hebs in round eight. So actually he... Um, it's a little bit tough, actually, this draw from Norm point of view, because um, the three Grand Masters that he's playing, he's he's going to be black against all three of them. So I don't know whether he will um, adopt a strategy of, like, particularly against Tamas, who's doing so well at the moment, um, whether he will try and actually just go for a draw uh, today and um, and uh, then and then try and win the white games, or. Um, or whether he's trying for win all games, because I know sometimes it's actually just hard to play for a draw anyway, and uh, so you may be 
play for a win, but a fantastic stop for him. Uh, Tamas has played actually some strong players, Andrew Greek, David Fitzsimmons and Mark Hebden, um, and got two out of three there. Uh, Hibs, we saw yesterday with this, uh, yesterday morning we, we were commentating um, and he was playing Andrew Greet and he got a uh, fantastic attack in um, uh, as Black um, in the Italian game and just pushing all his pawns forward. Um, what well, He managed to win the exchange um, and then Andrew was um, very good at drumming up counterplay and... Uh, and managed to get this this kind of pass deep on going through the position and so Hebs decided discretion was the better part of valor and took the draw um, and marcus has uh played um another junior player borna derek shani managed to win that one and then draws with both the scottish players uh, grandmaster matthew turner and international master andrew greet um so it'd be really nice to see some norms made here but let's see how we go okay i'm gonna head back to the games okay and we see that direct burn has uh, pushed in the center with e5 so this is a kind of king's indian type setup um and he will be trying i mean i guess this 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 long diagonal might get a bit opened up and he'll be trying to push those pawns on the king side um okay so let's see how Hebs and Marcus are going. Uh, so Mark Hebden, ha oh, we're gonna get a very exciting game here because Mark has now castled queenside. So let's see how that all went. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Oh, hoo, hoo. oof, just there. Uh... Just got back right now from the uh, from the park run, so uh, whew, sorry for the it late was. one. Uh, it was uh, it was uh, wasn't me, it wasn't my fault. It wasn't me running a super slow time. Yes. So, okay. Uh, so what we're up to is uh, we're on Mark Hebden up against Marcus Harvey, and I'm going to take it from the beginning um, so you can see how it got there. But uh, I was just commenting that Mark has castle queenside, so it'll be it's going to be promising to be a very exciting game, and both these players are doing well on. Um, Two out of three. I am. So this is uh, Mark's favourite line since uh, a very long time. Um, actually, um, it's uh, the, it was called the uh, the slow Slav by Boris Avrok. This line with knight h4, and uh, it's um, um, it's actually turned into one of the. Um, well, it's probably dec maybe decreased a little bit, but uh, at one stage it was uh, a very popular line at the elite level, and uh, and uh, yeah, I you know I started playing it as well, and uh, but Mark had been playing it for for donkeys years actually, so. Uh, so were you copying Mark when you took it up? Well, uh, I certainly knew that Mark had played it. That's, uh, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, he was looking at the uh, the elite games and also a book by uh, Boris Averick in which he uh, he recommended this. So uh, when it just closed the door, oh. Ah, right. So, um, yeah, this is quite, so, I mean, basically what white does, you know, white, um, uh, black, you know, in a, in a queen's pawn uh, opening gets his bishop outside the pawn chain, which is good news, really. Um, but white sort of exploits that and gets the bishop pair. And then, um, yeah, I mean, this move, um, uh, C takes D5, in a way, feels a little early for, um, I'm trying to remember my theory here, but it feels a little early because, um, uh, well, it means that a black knight can get directly to c6. Normally, what you'd want to do, you'd wait until black goes knight bd7, and you can see that the black's been avoiding that as well. Uh, and then you take on d5, and then the knight can't get to c6 in one go. But, um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's uh, um, I'm not 100% sure about that one, that in this position, it's not the right move, but I would have thought... I thought that they sometimes played uh, g3 or something like that rather than taking on d5 and just waited a little bit longer but okay c takes d5 must be quite decent uh takes on d5 knight g6 hg6 castles queen side yeah and uh, i mean white's claiming that he's got um you know a um uh the two bishops um he's going to play king b1 rook c1 and it's not 100 percent clear where the black king's going to go if you um um if you put the king on the king side then you've got a, a pretty ready-made attack with um, with with white just to um, um, just to play h4 g4 h5 um, 
which can be surprisingly dangerous. Um, if you castle queen side, all black gets in, white gets in king b1, rook c1. So, um, but I think this is still theory. I think I've got some, I think mm. I've, got, I've got some analysis on this line. I think uh, king b1 is what you're uh, playing now. So you quite like this for white, it sounds like. It's not bad. It's not bad for white. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I always, uh, um, you know, I always assumed, and th this was sort of the orthodoxy, that um, uh, that these lines for white weren't very much at all. But, uh, yeah, mm. get some uh, elite grandmasters working on, on it and, uh, you know, suddenly it all changes and uh, it ends up looking reasonably dangerous. So, uh, yeah, no, I, I certainly thought this line was worth, uh, was worth exploring with white. Yeah, and I actually wonder what... Both the players are playing for whether um, they're both going for a win at this stage, or whether either or both would be happy with a draw. Yeah, I mean, I think Mark's um, this this is a sort of a plus equals openings really, where you sort of say, well, you know, if I play it decently, then um, you know, I'm um, I've just got a good chance for an opening advantage and not too much risk, you know. And I think the blacks sort of thinking kind of the same, really. You know, uh, okay, you know, white might be a tiny bit better, mm. but um, it's been the position's been flattened out a little bit, symmetrical pawn structure. I'm sure I can hold it, but I mean, uh, it's just important to. Uh, I mean, black just needs to work out where am I going to put my king, and also to see whether he can get any queenside counterplay going. You know, with uh, that's most normally with a six b five, knight a five to c four. You know, it's quite a normal way of playing. I do yeah. find it easier to play for white in, in general, but um, but that's not to say that this is bad for black at all. All right. Let's go back to um, Thomas Fodor against Ravi Haria. Now, this is the battle between the ah. top two players at the moment in terms of score. So Ravi is on three out of three. It was showing last night that the result was looking showing a draw for Ravi. And I messaged you saying, isn't that... Isn't Ravi really winning this rook ending? And actually, it turns out he he did win that rook ending. Okay, well, Ravi's playing. Um, uh, this has been a bit of a challenge for for Tom for Tamas. And it's quite interesting because, of course, Tamas is a d4 player normally, mm. and he has played some e4, um, mm. no, certainly against me in the last four NCL, but um, um, uh, uh, against me, he played e takes d5. I mean, he played an exchange French, which you know doesn't really show. Um, I mean, he played it with some ideas, and uh, it was, you know, quite a tough battle. Um, but, you know, it, it sort of shows he doesn't really play the main lines, I think, normally. I mean, he's, he's Yeah, a he must have been studying this up, right? Because, he, I mean, he deliberately went into this. It wasn't like he was tricked in move orders or anything like that. He, well, he deliberately chose to go here. And well, 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 I mean, yeah, D4 was played and then E6. So I don't know. I mean, I think it's... You know the the way it could happen maybe is uh, you you play one d four and then your opponent plays one e six that he hasn't normally played. So you say mm. okay, well I'll play two e four, and then he plays two d five, and then you think okay, well do I know it better than he or does he know it better? He's maybe improvising, yeah. um, and then you improvise as well. You know, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I don't quite know. It looks like Ravi is playing it very fast, but on yeah. the other hand, after after bishop b three, seven bishop b three, Ravi is. Um, uh, spent four minutes thinking and then two minutes on queen b6 which is interesting to say the least yeah we didn't get my alakine chatard attack that i was wanting no but this is this is super sharp this is super sharp actually uh this is um this has been one of the um uh i mean there's like there's theory up to move uh, uh easily 28 29 on uh, in this line this is one of the most forcing lines of the uh uh, of this uh this french dynet so uh you know, queen b2 queen takes b2 rook b1 queen a3 blah 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 you know it's going on and on forever so, yeah i mean these players would have known they were playing each other because it is an all play all so they would have um they would have prepped for each other so they yeah, kind of know yeah, what it yeah. means yeah this is very this is a very interesting well the only surprising thing is that ravi's uh, thought for uh, for six minutes about it which is, uh, you know, um, presumably I, I would have thought that he wouldn't have been expecting things this from Tamas, and that maybe he was uh, thinking again what his lines were. But, uh, but I mean, if you know your theory in this line with black and white doesn't, then uh, I mean, at the very least, you're going to get an easy draw. I mean, that's uh, uh, it's just uh, it's you know, it's just so utterly, so incredibly complicated. This you're not yeah. going to make it up as white. You really have to know it properly. I, I looked at these lines with with black quite a lot, but. Um, uh, 
Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, again, you know, in principle, it's this is an elite level line, really, that uh, you say, um, uh, you know, if I I know it very well, and then I will uh, make a, a slightly uncomfortable draw, you know, that, um, but that's brilliant, because I know it well, and then it's not uncomfortable. But, uh, but in general terms, if, if you're thinking about playing it against, uh, you know, a whole range of players, then yeah. it's, uh, you can only use it against people who are stronger than you, who you want to uh, um to draw against but if you can use it as a surprise weapon then yeah then it's quite that's quite nifty i have to say well it looks like ravi's managed to do it as a surprise because uh, yeah, yeah. so um uh yeah in that case uh nice very nice you know it's worked out very very well okay let's just keep going through the games so here we go um Warner against David. So just a just a, a good old Mark Hebden Tarash actually with three C three, and not Tarash, uh, Torre rather with three C three. So um, Mark's not doing this anymore actually, but um, yeah. this is always Mark's uh, subtle move order. So um, uh, C three six Bishop G five. Yeah, and what can you say? Not not much happening really yet. Uh, we'll have well, to see. Warner was playing quite differently yesterday as well, wasn't he? I, well, I well, remember. Warner played one night F3 yesterday. Um, yes. And, and again wasn't... today, but then didn't he follow it up with G3 and that kind of thing? Yeah, but it was a bit weird, wasn't it, what happened? with Something with D6 and E5 happened. So um, whereas here, White played, uh, Black played 1D5 first move. So it might just be part of his repertory that, um, yeah. he goes, you know, he goes, if one night F3, if people go 1D5, then he goes D4. You know, it's possible. Yeah. Um, slightly, yeah, I didn't. I don't know Borner at all. I don't know his openings or or, or what he plays uh, uh, at all. So, uh, um, but it could, that could be, you know, that could be a possible. Yeah. Okay, well, because, uh, I mean, doing it that way, I suppose, you know, one knight f three d five d four. You avoid all sorts of nimzos and uh, you know and, and kings Indians and that sort of thing. So uh, it would you know narrow the possibilities down quite a bit. Okay, Matty T against Jonah. And I was telling everybody that Matty T sometimes does some surprising stuff. So let's see where we have got to. There's some around here. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is quite uh, E6. I'm trying to, ooh, I'm trying to Gosh, remember. Look at these dark squares. I'm trying to remember my theory here it's uh i can't i can't i just cannot remember this at all what uh what, what on earth you're supposed to do against I, I mean knight b6 was always the move that you expect but um yeah e6 yeah yeah i don't uh i can't remember this at all hey ocelot hello ocelot i um no i can't remember this at all but um uh but bishop g5 looks pretty pretty normal bishop b7 um, bishop h6 so we uh, swap off uh yeah i suppose causing black not to castle although yeah i mean yeah yeah i mean it really, i mean it doesn't really make much difference you're coming to g7 very quickly so uh it's not a not a big advantage it makes sense that white trades off those dark square bishop now that um black's gone e6 and g6 exactly yeah yeah exactly but um but in all in all fairness i think after knight c7 um you're going king g7 afterwards yeah i don't know i don't think it's anything special for white really yeah but um but uh yeah maybe a, a small edge you know a, a small edge i guess but uh but i think black's uh, black's pretty solid there fine last one yeah andrew Gr ooh, ooh, bishop a3 hmm hitting this d6 pawn interesting um this is all yeah c6 castles queen b6 and e5 and bishop a3 wow i don't uh again this is something i'm, I'm looking at it i'm thinking i have never seen this before hmm. <laughs> um okay. actually tell me about queen if you know about this one just about queen b6 itself no queen a5 uh is i've done queen a5 before i used to play that based on a andrew martin book queen a5 and then you had all these lines where you swing over to h5 and you also can go into b4 and sort of hassle these pawns down here um yeah so i'm quite familiar with that one but queen b6 i don't know so well 
Uh, no, I'm going to, I'm actually going to have a look at it because I don't, uh, I, I've never actually, uh, I've never actually uh, seen this before, um, which is always, uh, always nice when you, uh, when you come across something like that. Although I'm thinking, I'm trying to think actually, uh, reference, how many games? Oh, it's a, it's a, a reasonable line, B3. Um, e5, oh, this is quite a main line. Bishop a3 has not been played very much, but uh, it's been played in um, in, a, in a few games and scores um, pretty well for white, I have to say. My goodness. <laughs> scores um, scoring uh, something like 70%, I think. So um, um, pretty good. Yeah, rook d8 is the, uh, is the, um, is the normal line. Okay, I'm going to play it on the board. There we go. Yeah, I mean, there's 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 crazy stuff, right? I mean, because you you could look at it and, uh, um, it's not the sort of thing you'd want to do without having look having the variations a bit in your head because there's stuff like bishop takes d6, for example. Oh, yeah. and forking on e5. No, you can't fork on e5. So you take and then c5. Fork on c5. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, you know, uh, there's probably, you know, some sort of tactics with E takes D4 and the rest, but it would be a bit annoying to have to calculate those at the board. You know, you'd rather just sort of know them. Um, and, uh, you know, they're most likely, you, you could just guess and say, well... You can't play E takes D4 here, can you? Well, I could go uh, C, well, I could go C takes B6 then. Yeah, you can't. That's what I'm saying. So yeah. you have to drop back. Well, I could go Queen B4. You know, that's uh, uh, one idea, for example. But I mean, you know, I could go C takes D6 and D takes C5 then, which would be, well, I don't know. I mean, at the very least, confusing. Queen takes C3, D takes C5. I like this for white, I think. Yeah, no, I know. So, I mean, but I mean, there must be some, there must be some ideas. I mean, maybe after Bishop D6, we go E takes D4. That's possible. Um... You know, just to confuse stuff. But yeah. I mean, we do have stuff like uh, I don't know, knight a four. Then, for example, I don't know. You know, uh, I, I, I'm not hundred percent sure that this is uh, you know that this is all working. You know, that's the uh, that's the point. Um, so um, uh, yeah, but I mean, I'm I'm looking to see. I'm looking at uh, well, let's have a look. Rook d eight has been played. Uh, uh, that's the main move that's been played. Yeah. Um, and bishop takes d6 has not been the main move that's been uh, there. Okay. So, so, you know, I, I'm sort of assuming that there is just something, you know. I mean, that doesn't Yeah, seem maybe white just doesn't go into that at all. Yeah, no, that's right. But, you know, if you if you know it, then um, uh, then that's fine, you know. But, um, white could go c5, maybe. And um, white could maybe go c5, hitting the queen and also the pawn. And if, it, if black takes... Then maybe take with the oh you take with the bishop you can take with the bishop you then get hit by queen a5 at some stage hitting the, the bishop on a3 and the, and the knight on c1 so uh, um, yeah I'm not um, I'm not I'm not hundred percent sure about that I'm just e4. thinking actually, wait 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 can I try it yeah c, c5 queen, queen a5 queen a5 queen a5 plus yeah okay that makes sense um, I mean just thinking again actually after bishop takes d6. Um, c5, queen b4, uh, no, uh, c5, sorry, rook takes d6, I'm playing, sorry. Um, rook takes d6, d6, c5, queen b4, c takes d6, just something occurs to me, could I play e4 here? e4, Hitting both knights at once. Yeah, I mean, basically, I want to try and stop you from getting um, from getting uh, uh, pawns on e d six and e five. That might work. I'm not sure, but it might work. So I, I don't see how you save both knights. And if you go knight takes e four, I go knight takes e four, and then I capture the pawn on d six, and I've got two pieces for the rook. You know, which yeah must be uh, decent. I don't know. I mean, you know, th I th there's there's bound to be something because otherwise, you know, bishop a three would be the refutation of rook d eight, but um, um, bishop d six rather would be the refutation. But if you don't know it and you, and you you sort of think, oh, you know, can I can I trust that white won't do it, or should I calculate it? It, it can cost you a lot of time, you know. And uh, mm. uh, that's why actually, you know, that's always the the danger. Funnily enough, of um, uh, preparing your your um, your openings with engines only. 
because they only show you the very best lines. And actually, it's it's all the bad lines that that look OK, that cost you the time during your game. You know, when you're playing a, an opening for the yeah. first time, you look at it and you say, oh, wait a minute. The engine never said that it could do that. But, but this looks quite dangerous. You know, how, how do I refute it? You know, and that's. Yeah. Actually, Jonathan's avoided it. He's um, he's done a different one. He's gone uh, E4. 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 He's E4. Is that is that even is that possible? It's what he's done after a sixteen minute think. Come, come the loonies. E4. Because hmm. I, I, it seems to me like you're you're going to be losing a pawn simply. The D6 pawn. Well, or the E4 one. I mean, if I go knight G5 simply or something, I don't know. Yeah. Um, so E5. How do you? How, what how do is you? The plan. How do you do this? Because I'm I'm attacking E4 and I'm attacking D6. Is he going to go have... C5? Well, you do have a lovely move, Queen A5. Again, yes. And look at what you're forking there. Oh, actually, it's three of them. I can't do arrows, can I? But then you're forking this knight, that knight, and that bishop. That that looks pretty good. Yeah, but I've got queen c1 then. Defending all three. <laughs> what incredible geometry. <laughs> and there's quite a few pawns hanging, it must be said. You must be able to go e3, mustn't you? And then cut off the line or, or, or get the bishop yeah. on e3. But I can go f4 then. You're going f4. Well, what's this like? This is fine for black, surely. I don't know. I mean, I'm attacking. D3 pawn drops off. And D6 is under attack as well. I don't know. All right. Um, let's fling all the rest of the pieces in. There are knight G4. All right. I'll uh, take on D6 then, maybe. All right. I'm going to take on C3. Okay. I'll go B4, maybe. B4. Um, yeah, that's maybe a little bit irritating. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't know really. But, uh, but um, e four, yeah, it's really, uh, really risky. Okay, so um, yeah, if knight g five, um. I think you have to do your line. I think I think Queen A five and E three feels like the more or less the only thing you can do. I think uh, Queen A five here E three F four. Um, but now now maybe we'd need to. My other uh, idea was C five. Yeah, I mean E three. Uh, oh no, but that opens a diagonal. It's not. I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I just just have a quick thing because um, uh, I mean after all. You know, queen queen e three is not a threat. Um, uh, just going back after f four. You know, um, queen e three is not a threat because a three is hanging. So we just need something. We just need something clever. <laughs> Unfortunately, is this the channel to find something clever? Um, well, <laughs> there's a lot of clever people on this channel. Well, indeed. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's got to be. It's got to be some some tactics. Why isn't Black developing his queen side pieces? Uh, they're on strike, or a lot, I think. No, it's true. Um, it's all a little mm. bit. Um, uh, but there's, there's pawns hanging. There's uh, the d6 pawn hanging at the moment, uh, and that's kind of the thing that we've got to watch out for. That's why I mean, knight g4 was quite sensible from that point of view. Um. Well, I mean, actually, come to think of it, knight g4, bishop takes d6. We could just play a move like rook d8, maybe. Because I quite like just hitting the uh, that pawn on d4. Yeah. I mean, is this so... So what if you can't still do that b4 plan? Yeah, I, I just want to go something like queen a6, I suppose. Okay, yeah. And so we've got counterattacks against a couple yeah. of points. I mean, I go b5. Oh, oh, no. I go bishop c7. Bishop c7. You're going to trap my queen. I'm gonna no, you can't. Me. You can't. You can't. I'm going to take this then. Ah. Uh. Yeah. 
takes knight takes b5. It's all very fraught for black, but uh, hmm. possible, possible, possible. Maybe it, uh, maybe it's possible. It's um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. This is a complete. Um, this is a complete, uh, complete mess. I think. Rafa Chess is suggesting looking for forcing moves in a force situation. So we need to get some proper calculation here. We do indeed. <laughs> that is absolutely true. Um, I'm totally in agreement. But it's probably not going to. It's not going to quite happen. Um, but I do think that um, uh, that the knight g4. Um, I, I like knight g4 in general, um, or at least moving the knight somewhere. I do like that idea. But maybe after after bishop takes d6, we just go rook e8 or something, and uh, and just say, okay, you've got your d4 pawn hanging. Yeah, you know, prove what you're going to do. Just go rook e8 or something. Yeah. Um, because bishop it's b5. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's great. I mean, bishop b5. I could go f6. You know, so it's it's uh, another fork. Another fork. I mean, there are all sorts of. You know, I could always 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 consider sacrificing stuff. You know. Uh, you know that's the point with white i could say okay I'll, I'll give up a bishop and get a, a bit of a pawn wedge but uh yeah i don't know i mean it's it's a real a real mess but uh but i think that knight g5 looks really uh i mean that just looks really like uh, a really critical move mm. um but i'm just wondering is this theory or anything let me just uh oh, knight g5 has now been played by andrew greet okay because I'm only getting knight e1 actually in uh in the games played uh um so far over the board Okay, so a novelty by international master Andrew Greet. Yeah, let's have a look in correspondence as well, just for the sheer. No games in correspondence. Um, and uh, let me just have a quick look. Uh, we'll go for the complete tour then uh, and have a look in the uh, engine games, see whether. No, I mean, uh, um, I think e4 has been very little played. And yeah, knight g5 is. Uh, is definitely uh, um, uh, seems to be a novelty. Ninety one has been played in the uh, in the past, but uh, I mean, I do. Yeah, yeah. Think, uh, so it looks like an interesting move, knight g five. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's definitely uh, definitely um, um, a move that you can that you say, yeah, you know, uh, it's critical. It looks quite critical. So um, you know, let's uh, let's look at it. Great. It's going to okay. be. I, I think what what you said is virtually forced. I think queen a five, queen c one, and then e three. I think that's really. I'm pretty sure that's going to happen on the board because, uh, and then f4, and then it's up to black then to find, you know, what is the next, what's the next good move to uh, to play. Mm. Oh, fascinating, uh, great, great struggle, great. Okay, so that was that one. Let's see, Hebs against Marcus Harvey. Ah, interesting. So, so we Marcus... had Russell's queenside in, didn't we, before? Yeah, no. yeah, and, and I was talking about the question is where. Where are both sides going to put their king now? Um, Marcus has gone for the queen side, which is yeah, okay. It, it's a yeah. I mean, um, uh, I, I would I would normally I, I would myself I would have preferred to go for the king side and uh, get try and get some counterplay against the um, uh, the white <laughs> king. Um, but it is risky, uh, absolutely. Um, castles queen side. If it works, then then it's safer. Because obviously you're just meeting, you know, queenside casting with queenside casting. But I'm a little bit worried about um, um, about uh, uh, the safety of Black's king in the short term. I have to say, because uh, well, well, just simply what Mark did, you know, is very sensible. Rook c1, king b8, and then knight a4. And we're coming in with uh, with bishop b5, you know, and and actually, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. I don't, I, I'm not quite sure actually how you're. How you're defending yeah. this elegantly, actually. Um, I mean, and there's the, the just so many obvious moves for for white now. Bishop b5, rook c2, rook, rook h c1. You know, and you don't even need to think about them really. And uh, and black's got to try and work out, you know, what, what he does against that. So, um, so I, I if, think black, if black didn't do anything and like played on the king side or did something irrelevant, how does that? How does this all play out? Well, bishop b5 is a big threat coming up next. Okay, so I'm just trying to think of it. So say we did that or something. Okay, I'll go bishop b5. You're just going to uh, take a piece. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so you can go king a8. Um, 
But I mean, we, we've got to start, you've got to start thinking about even stuff like rook takes c6 followed by rook c1. You know, I mean, it's really, it's, it's really all, all starting to get very, very dangerous here. Okay. So say you don't do something. Ah, he's actually played king a8, which is, is better, yeah. I think, than bishop d6. Yeah. So I think, but I think Mark will just play bishop b5. And then, yeah, that's good to decide what, what am I going to do about that? It's a bit annoying, this pin against the queen, isn't it? it? Well, it's not easy to get out of. And, you know, I mean, at the very least, you know, white could just take on c6 and give you that, um, uh, you know, that uh, backward pawn on the c file. And then triple up, you know, rook c3, rook hc1, queen c2. You know, I mean, yeah. it's really it's really simple plans. I mean, you know, that that's the... That, that's the main thing about it that it's it's just a really simple plan for white and for whereas with black you've got to be thinking my goodness you know what, what exactly am i what exactly am i aiming for here you know so uh yeah rook b8 is possible but i think i'll just go something like um like rook c3 i think for example i mean maybe rook c2 is better but i, I, I if I'm, I'm just playing for the maximum i want to go rook hc1 and queen c2 and really pick up that. I mean, it's it's coming fast, right? And I mean, you've got to watch out. If you've gone rook b8, then if the queen moves away from c7, I'm going to have knight b6 stuff, you know. So, um, I don't know. I, I think this is a very difficult position for uh, for black, I think. So if we go crazy and take this pawn? Well, I'm imagining that I can just take on h2 and take on c6 with a rook. Mm hmm. Oh, that's really nasty, yeah. yeah. And my B6 check is a threat now. I mean, it's it's, it's not just, uh, you know, follow A, B, C. This, is, this is really awful, yeah. Yeah, this is awful. Gosh, no, yes. I mean, uh, yeah. yeah I, you know, I, I mean, I, I do sometimes get go over the top with these things, but I, I do think that Black's in, in, in serious trouble here, you know. I think casting, I don't think casting queenside was a, was a good, uh, was a good idea. So you're expecting bishop b5 and, and rook stumbling on the c file from Hebs? Yeah, and... yeah. 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 I, I just think, you know, just um, uh, easy plan. You know, normally it's the sort of plan that Hebs would play in an instant, actually. You know, it's... Uh, right, Raph just is asking about black uh, trying to counter it with e5, breaking in the centre. So say mm -hmm. white does this, um, then a move like that. Yeah, Hebs has played uh, bishop b5, by the way. Okay. So I could just take on e5 there, I think. So here takes like that. Yeah. So, Queen five rook takes c six. Yeah, that looks strong. Yeah, uh, the same thing, Rafa. After rook b eight, rook c three, e five. Yeah, then I take on e five and then go rook takes c six again. It's um, it's really, really. I mean, it's really dangerous. I think so. Uh, yeah, it's the same. Yeah. It's hard to think of moves that even just consolidate, isn't it? Yeah, no, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, for, for black now, a result will be if um, if uh, if white ends up playing bishop takes c six and uh, and just giving you a weak pawn on uh, c six, that's going to be a result, which is you know, which is which is not very good, you know. I mean, uh, so um, the black pieces are all. I was just yeah. thinking, what if we go rook c eight, yeah, and then just to try and free our queen to go somewhere else. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, rook c let, let, let's just say rook c3, just uh, if I, um, maybe rook c2 is better, but let's, let's go rook c3. All right, and then this one. Yeah, okay, I'll go rook hc1. Let's just go for it uh, this way. <laughs> um, we have to move our queen out of the way. All right, uh, let's try it. It's Marcus's pieces. Queen d6. So um, if I just went, um, I'll, I'll just go knight c5. Uh, I mean, knight b6 check is is maybe even very dangerous here, but I'll go knight c5 simply. Knight c5. Hmm. Well, I do agree it's looking scary, but I'm going to go rook g2. Okay, knight b7. Oh. Yeah, 
That is looking very scary, actually. But all right, <laughs> I'm going to go queen b4. All right. Uh, uh, rook takes c6. Mm -hmm. You're going to make me. Yeah, or we'll do or win all your pieces, I suppose. Um, and I can take on c8 already. I'm already at the exchange up. Um, yeah, you exchange up now. Yeah. And Lord no, I mean, I must have a. I don't know. Yeah, I okay. think that's where I think you know, it's. Uh, but I, I don't know. I mean, again, you know, I'm not saying that there's no defense or anything, but I, I just would say, practically speaking, um, I'm uh, I'm just thinking, wow, you know, I just so much loved, I'd so love to be white in this position, you know, because I mean, also after rook c8, uh, you know, also I, I don't think, uh, hey, minquits, knight d7 to b8, yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, that is actually, uh, um, he's played it, knight d7, I think you're right, uh, minquits, that's what he's going to do, mm -hmm. uh, I hadn't actually seen uh, that way of, uh, I was looking for a way to, to get the knight involved defending, but knight d7 to b8 is possible, um, but I'm not... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not very happy about it. I would say, um, yeah. I mean, I think probably White is going to end up playing. Um, well, I can play Rook C two, you know, Rook C two, Rook H C one, and then uh, find some sort of way of um, of increasing the pressure. But I, I think you're right, Sir Minkwitz. I think this is uh, this is definitely the uh, the best way of playing Knight D B eight. But uh, yeah, as, Ju as Julian Hodgson would say, keeping it tight at the back. But, mm. uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Possible. I think if the queen moves away from c7, we're going to, yeah, I don't know. We're going we're to have some, uh, there's going to be a bit of uh, some knight b6 check stuff coming in at some stage. So, uh, but uh, but yeah, this is this is definitely a good defense. Uh, knight d7 to b8, probably the only one actually, I think. And uh, Marcus has played that quite uh, quite quickly. So, uh, yeah. but I think you, you, I mean, you, you go something like I'm not sure either g3 or h3. Bring your rook into c1, and then just uh, yeah, try and do something. I mean, probably you're going to start expanding on the queen side. Maybe a3, b4. You know, try and uh, play the knight to c5. Get the two bishops. I mean, white white's just. Why it's got a very, a very, very pleasant position there. Yeah. But uh, that uh, knight d7 to b8, I hadn't spotted that defense. That's uh, that's uh, that's going to hold it together for the for the for the time being. So well played, uh, Marcus. All right. Let's go back uh, to Tamas against Ravi. Ah, it's going to be a repetition, I think. Oh, do you? Do you think they're going to go for a little? I don't think. I don't think Tamas. Tamas played the a three, so he didn't dare go for the sharpest lines. Which, yeah, if you're not prepared, then I can imagine. But they've just repeated now: knight a four, queen a five check, knight c three, queen b six. So, I think Ravi's sensible to to uh, to go for a draw against Tamas. Oh, but Tamas is... Uh, is oh, around. he hasn't got the chance. Gosh, so he's Tamas... On, so let's on. just see that repetition on the board. So we had... To, it was going to be like Queen A5 check, Knight C3, Queen B6, Knight here, here. So this could have been a repetition with the Knight going back. Um, but Tamas yeah. is actually is not happy with that that development and uh, is going for the win. Now we saw um, Tamas playing for the win yesterday, didn't we, in a position yeah. where... Yeah, this is very impressive. I mean, every, you know, he's, um, uh, you know, because uh, in, in both cases, he was under, you know, quite a bit of uh, psychological pressure, you could say, you know, just, uh, and, um, and both times he, um, you know, he, uh, he, he carried on and, uh, and played for the win. So it's very, uh, very impressive, this. Um, uh, this is actually um, sort of vaguely known, but um, um, I don't think it's, it hasn't scored very well, you know, for White at all. Um, so um yeah yeah it's it, this it's like in principle you know this line is um is not not much for white at all you know it's um uh i mean the knight on a4 is so bad i mean i, I think in, in principle black's normally taking on d4 um a couple of times and then playing something like b6 yeah maybe i think the good bishop takes d4 but you know whatever doesn't really matter takes takes and then something like b6 maybe 
And you've just got this knight on a4 that's not very happy. And I'll, I'll, I might go bishop b7 to c6, even. So, um, yeah, yeah. You know, what so is it, like the king side? Castle king side, do you think? Yeah, castle king side. Castle king side and then uh, and then do something. But, you know, this knight on a4... In a normal in a normal line, it would be on f three or something, and here it's on a four, which is uh, horrible. Yeah. So, um, so I mean, th this is not um, this is not a critical line at all for um, uh, for white. So, in principle, uh, you know, from from all this uh, uh, jockeying uh, for um, for opening uh, for openings, and probably where both players were a bit out of what they knew normally. Um, yeah, it looks like uh, Ravi's had a good result from the black piece with the black pieces anyway. Yeah, okay. Let's see. Borna against David. All right, so um, we've, um, uh, yeah, we've got this Torre and then. Um, yeah, white played uh, played e4. So we've got this sort of strange IQP position where um uh yeah, where white's white's got a knight on d2. Mm. I mean in, in principle it doesn't look very impressive at all for, for white to me. And uh I think black's completely fine. Maybe even even a bit more than fine. So uh yeah. Yeah, no, just a good position for black, really. A good, um, a good IQP, really. Yeah. So what, what should so white should what try and build up by dropping the bishop back and bring the knight into c4. Yeah, I don't think you're you're really ever you're not going to develop a kingside attack. I mean, you're too slow, you know, and everything's wrong. So okay. you should probably, so you should probably be trying to. Um, uh, Sort of entrench yourself around the e5 square, you know. Maybe, uh, I mean, bring a knight to knight d2 into e5. You know, the bishop goes to g3. Maybe put the the queen on e2, the rooks on c1 and d1. You're not playing for a kingside attack. You're just playing. Uh, you're playing you know, for like e5 and trying to liquidate. Yeah, you know, you're just trying to use basically the you know the square that the d4 pawn gives you, the e5 square. Use that with your knights and and stick in the center there. But in principle, blacks, you know, just developed very logically. He's going to play bishop b7. And then afterwards, you know, if you swap off the light squared bishops, that's always pleasant for white, um, just because it's the, the bishop that controls the squares around your uh, isolated queen's pawn. And then after bishop b7, go rook c8, queen c7. I mean, yeah, you know, you're you're, you're just nicely organised. I mean, it's just a, a nice uh, IQP position for black here. Okay. Um, let's see. Matthew Turner and Jonah Willow. Ah, pardon me. So, yeah, I mean, White's got a, a yeah, I guess uh, you'd say a, a sort of a minimal edge. Um, just um, I'd be surprised Black went played the night back to. I'd be surprised with a few of. Um, of Where did we uh, leave it? Because they were swapping off dark square bishops, weren't they? We got to kind of King F eight. Um, yeah, it should be five. Oh, okay, I understand why. Yeah, I was expecting knight c seven here actually, just um, uh, just to uh, to bring the knight you know back into contact with the uh, with the d five square. Yeah, so instead gone. Yeah, knight. So here, this sort of yeah. thing. Um, I suppose keeps the king side stronger anyway. Yeah, yeah, it was just a yeah, you know, it, it's just a natural move, put it that way. Um, I mean, what what Jonah did was a bit more risky. So he went um, knight a five, queen a three, king g seven, uh, castles, and now a six. Bishop goes back to e two, and then yeah, uh, knight goes around to c six again. So uh, you know, just uh, and rook f d one, and uh, yeah, I, I mean, um, West West got a you know a small edge um it's not very much really um but i guess the small edge is simply that the light square bishop is a bit more active than the dark than the than black's light square bishop you know and black still has to develop and uh and white could um you know it's always got ideas like taking on d5 uh and if black takes with a queen then 
we, we will be able to, to to extract to push away the queen with a you know a bishop c4 and then play d5 and we got a slight edge similar to what uh, matthew had against uh, marcus harvey you know before yeah so um uh i mean it's a slight edge for uh, for white but you know in principle if you're looking at uh, um you know long term what could black do then um he should be fine i mean you could go knight c7 b6 bishop b7 get yourself developed and gradually you know just um uh gradually just uh, get your way out of there you know and uh and the nice thing about these IQP positions is that you know you've got to put up with a bit of pressure at the start, but if you manage to um, to neutralise all that, then you can actually be better. Simply, you know, that's the point. That's the risk. Yeah. For, for I mean, it looks quite a quiet position to me. It, it doesn't uh -huh. look like White's going to generate an attack here, but no, no I mean, White's not going to generate an attack here. I mean, again, it's it's using it's using the IQP for your squares, you know, outposts on e5 and c5, and maybe trying to um, you know have. You've got activity, so you can force black to get a, an isolated queen's pawn too. You know, with something like bishop c4, and then exchanges on d5, or or knight e5, bishop f3. You know, that sort of uh, that yeah. sort of thing. But it's not. Uh, no, I mean, I mean, it's 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 uh, you know, it, it's a uh, a minimal edge for white. I think you know, it's nothing uh, nothing amazing. Okay. Let's see this one. Oh, no, this was this exciting one. Oh, so, yeah, we've had it. Oh, uh, uh, Jonathan must have heard you. He's played your move. He's played my plan. Jonathan, watch out. Uh, so Gunslinger plays queen to a5, hitting all three pieces. Um, and Andrew plays the only move that defends all the three pieces, which I haven't, I haven't seen that very often, a queen move that attacks three minor pieces. And no. Then, and, then, and then a queen move that defends them. You know, it's quite uh, quite unusual. Quite nice, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, I started thinking about also whether well, you can do a problem based on sort of attacking three pieces each time with your queen. But let's not go there. We'll go e3, which is what we were looking at, f4, which is also what we're looking at, and c5, which is also what we were looking Indeed. at. Indeed. c5, yeah, I'm not... Hmm, not sure about that really. <laughs> we don't actually like that move. <laughs> I don't like that move very much, I have to say. But um Yes, I did feel bad about playing it because of opening up that long diagonal and the D5 square. Yeah, it might be might be alright, might be alright. You know, I mean it's, it's it's active and it hit and it hits stuff, you know. So um so from that point of view, but it's just that I've, you know just you, you've got now you've got a, a powerful bishop on g2 as well and uh and these d5 and b5 squares in addition so you know that's why i'm a little bit uh that's why you know first sight it's i sort of think ooh, you know i'm worried uh, something you know something like knight b5 maybe you know i'm i'm, I'm not uh 100 sure quite how i'm b6 again yeah yeah and c5 is now hanging as well so i'm not sure yeah so what's black got? Black's got the long diagonal the other way, the um, kind of G7 to A1 diagonal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what would we be doing there? And Ocelot's comments is black should be defending the queen side pieces. Uh, sorry, developing. Indeed, indeed. That would that would also be a very <laughs> sensible thing to say, I think, uh, from Ocelot. Um, so you could like, well, I suppose you could go knight c6, but you're going to lose a pawn. Well, yeah, knight c6, d takes c5, I find a bit irritating. Maybe you can give up a pawn because you've got this diagonal. Yeah, I mean, maybe you've got compensation. Take on c5, rook e8. You're also giving up uh, e3 as well, but... Um, oh, I don't want to give up e3. Well, no, it's not, it's not, it wouldn't be so bad giving up e3 because, uh, I mean, you know, it's a thing that you can hit and you've got open lines and everything. But it is quite, I mean, here, it is quite risky. It's incredibly risky, all this, and incredibly murky. I really haven't got much of a clue what's going on. I mean, b4, maybe? Yeah. b4. I would think we... Oh, well, we could go forwards to a4 or backwards to d8. And yeah, knight d6, I think there's queen c5, uh, Rafa Chess, so um, we'll take the, the bishop on c5. 
Uh, that's why I want to go B4 and then uh, protect it and then go knight D6 afterwards. I think probably back's the safer of the two, but it still doesn't feel very safe. Yeah, I, mean, I, could, go, I could go knight D6 then. Or rook D1 even, you know, uh, that might also be uh, quite annoying. Yeah. This is wrong, I think. I, I don't think it should be doing that. So not knight C6. Yeah, I'm not sure about knight C6. Um, Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Making all these noises. Um, it's not so easy. My goodness. Um, knight a six, maybe. Knight a six. I was just looking at it as well. Yeah, knight a six because it defends and stops b four and stuff. Oh, right. why, is, why is played d takes c five actually rather than knight b five, which might also be uh, is also. Oh, where do we get to? So f four c five. Uh, okay, so white played uh, takes. Yeah. Mm. Oh, pardon me, just there. Uh, Five kilometer run there, kicking in there. Um, mm. Oh, could you remove the labels, uh, Natasha, on the uh, on the screens? Because I'm I'm leaning down, and uh, you're only seeing. Uh, I half of my face. Can, but it's nice for people to know who we are. That is true. I mean, if you want to leave them, that's fine. It's just. Uh, but what you could do is tilt your screen towards you a bit, and then you get um, oh. then you see more of you. Yes. All right then. Going to be complicated. <laughs> Not that complicated. Um, okay, so D takes C five. So uh, if D takes C five, um, I'm wondering what is White's idea here. I mean, knight mm, knight E four feels like a feels like a plan. Maybe I'm not sure which one would I do. Knight C four, knight knight G four, knight. Feels like a bit of a lottery, really. Maybe knight g e four. I mean, the idea is I just you know obviously if you take on e four, I take on e four. You take on a one, queen a one, and then I'm I'm hoping I've got some, you know, just some massive threats against your dark squares. I take on a three as well at the end, don't I? Yeah, I know. I go knight f six check though. Oh, I see, and you're still. I've got a knight e eight, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's see. We don't have to take on a. No, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking more maybe after after knight e4, maybe you go knight d7 and just uh, and just uh, uh, keep it together because this is, looks a knight little bit. Knight d7, this knight. Yeah, this knight to d7 like that. Um, protect everything. Um, takes, takes. Mm -hmm. Moi. I mean, it, it, yeah, it's one of those weird positions. In some ways, I'm not quite sure what Black's doing next, but I'm also not quite sure what White's doing next. I mean, if I just played a move like Rook B1, for example, yeah. and just um, um, got out of there, I'm also maybe threatening to go B4 at some stage. You know, who knows? Um, or even Knight takes C5 followed by B4. Um, it's just kind of it's a little bit tough to um uh, to be sure you know what i think it's tricky for black yeah um what about rookie eight i might look at knight d6 then mm. i'll be able to take on b7 i don't mind that so much i think just because then i'll be able to swap off my silly bishop that is true, but I will have the two bishops. You will. I don't know. Mm. I'm not sure. It, it feels, it does, doesn't feel, it feels like I've lost a lot of, oh, he's gone bishop b2. I've gone bishop okay, b2. So c5, bishop, we were looking at, what, rook b1? Uh, knight e4, actually. We were knight looking e4. At, uh, yeah, no, rook b1 no. would also be interesting. Bishop b2. I mean, that's a, that's a sort of a logical move in a way. 
Um, but isn't aren't I just going knight c6 now? I would think if we have the chance to play knight c6, we should do it. Because then we can come into d4, can't we? Yeah. Doesn't feel um, doesn't feel like the um, like the move that's going to. Um, There's uh, a little, little bit less worrying, doesn't it, than it was a second ago for Black. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I feel I have a better feeling about Black's position if I can get my knight into c6 d4. Yeah, he's played it very quickly as well. So um, uh, yeah. There that, you go, Ocelot. He's getting those pieces out now. For you. He heard you, and he's doing it for you. Um, yeah, I mean, this this is. I, I mean, I've, I've no idea. I mean, in some ways, you know, the pawn on e three is quite weak, so you, you're a little bit worried about. Uh, mm, I might just end up losing that one. Um, and you know, obviously, <clears throat> White's got some nice squares on d five, and uh, you know, but but Black's got the knight on d four coming in, so there must be some counterplay at least. You would have thought. Yeah. I mean, the one thing I was wondering about was whether White might play bishop takes c6. Now, bishop c6. Yeah. And then uh, takes knight c e4. And knight e4. Yeah. Which might be annoying. Yeah. All right, so let's start off by trying that one. Knight takes. Yeah, okay. I'll uh, take on e4 with the uh, uh, with the knight, I guess. Could go bishop g7, but okay, let's uh, let's just do it like that. Yeah. I, I'm, I mean, I'm threatening bishop g7 and queen e3, really. You know, and, and then afterwards queen c5. So I've got, I've definitely got some. I've got some threats, you know, that's... Uh, um, so maybe we I don't think, take again. Um, well, no, I, I think, yeah, I think you probably have to take, probably. Okay. Um, but now you need to to find just a good move, like maybe, I, I don't know, something like bishop f5, maybe? Just hit some pieces, and then we just, uh, we'll just see what, uh, what that leads to. See what happens. Um, but I, I suppose I could take on g7 and go queen takes e3 then, actually. Because rookie eight, I've got queen c3 check. So maybe we should do bishop h3 instead of bishop f5. Yeah, that's possible. Um, I guess, um, yeah, let's say rook, 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 rookie one. Let's say rookie one, I suppose. Yeah. And then, I don't know, rookie eight? Yeah. Bishop g7. Yeah, I've got queen b2. Yeah, we could actually, we don't have to, do we? We can take this one. Yeah, I was, I was wondering about that one because it's, so that's quite a long diagonal really, but maybe, maybe it's not so, maybe you, sh you shouldn't be a scaredy cat. Bishop c3. Well, I suppose you could always block on d4 with a rook if you need to. So, yeah, this is probably not so bad. This is probably not so bad. Maybe try make. I could maybe go queen d2 yeah. instead, of, uh, instead of bishop c3. Queen b2, did you say? Yeah. How quickly are you mating me? I could try and swap queens. Yeah, no, it's it's, it's not so bad. It's not so bad. This, I think. I think. Uh, we're sort of dealing with it. It's uncomfortable, you know. I mean, uh, in general, you're sort of thinking if I if I end up losing this, then I'm I'm going to look really stupid because uh, it was obvious that my dark squares were so weak. But this is fine, I think. Uh, you're uh, surviving there. Okay. Yeah, it will be hard to. Yeah. So I don't know. It, this. I mean, it's quite a it's quite a crucial decision for for white. Uh, you know. I mean, it's uh, it's a really if you're going to if you're going to um uh uh to do something like uh, like that you know and go uh, and go bishop takes oh he's played it oh he has done it well now this is interesting so 
I don't know. I think Black's Black's completely in it. I think it's possible. It was probably yeah. I, I mean, uh, obviously, um, you know, I understand the decision completely because uh, it was one of the lines that uh, you know that uh, that came you know that that occurred to me. But um, uh, yeah, interesting. Okay. Take C six. You know, the, the one the one thing that you sort of you, you can say about all this is that. Um, um, yeah, I mean, it's sort of forcing play. So, so Jonathan's not having to think at all about it. So, and it's all the effort yeah. is on the white side. Um, yeah. Whereas I think there were some other alternatives from white, you know, like the ones we looked at, where you're sort of saying, well, you know, then Black's got to find some moves and, and create some ideas, you know. And uh, yeah, sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes the best way to do to, to win games is to force the opponent to to think himself, you know, rather than force him into a line. It turns out to be, you know, not quite as clear as you as you thought. But this is definitely a you know a very decent idea for white to uh, to try it makes a lot of sense you know if you um if you get it right then um you just end up with uh, a knight versus a light square bishop and uh, you know just pawns that black can't defend so interesting really interesting it's gone knight ce4 as well okay that's the most uh, the no most natural move so but i think uh, i think what we looked at with uh, knight takes c4 and bishop h3 possibly is uh, is quite decent. I mean, rook d1 would be an alternative to cover the d2 square. You know, that would be uh, what I was sort of thinking was that maybe some stage I thought we, we maybe want the e2 pawn defended, but you know, it's um, yeah, possible. We again need to find a good, a good idea here. Um, I guess you still want this rook there, all right? Um, so bishop takes b2, bishop takes uh, g7, yeah. Yeah, I'll go queen b2. Are we going to get trouble on f6? Why didn't we have this trouble before? You took on e4 before. Oh, sorry. I couldn't do that this time. You could, yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Wait, Wait a minute. So Wait one cotton picking second. I'm getting tricked. I'm going to take on e4 again. I still like my idea. Uh, okay, but we're playing with rook d1, though. That's uh, sorry. Wait, 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 wait. So where are we? So uh, bishop h3, rook d1, yeah. rook e8, bishop g7, and now I'm going to take here. Si, signora. <laughs> okay, I'll go queen b2 now. Yes. And so now my defense queen d2 is not possible. I have to do something else. Indeed. Si, signora. Por favor. Um, Queen into this game. That's my question. Um, it's kind of blocked off, isn't it, by my pawns? Aye. So, well, the only way is Queen C7. Hmm. Doesn't feel like a good move, though. All right. All right, I'll go, oh, I don't know, Bishop H8. Yeah. So then, I don't want to play f five. You might have to. No, I have to. Right, f five. Yeah, I'll go bishop e five probably. I'll go rook d six. I don't like this. No, that's. Uh, I'm going just going rook d1, rook d7 afterwards. Uh, I think this has gone wrong. Yeah. No. Um, uh, knight takes e4. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. Hmm. Tricky. You definitely need a good move after knight c4. I think uh, you know it's a good. Um... Hey, Schadenfreude. Hello, Schadenfreude. F6. Interesting. Ah, twenty f6. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He's he's rescuing my line. Is Schadenfreude? Maybe queen b2. F6 here, giving up the pawn. 
Mm. I'm not sure really. Um, I mean, I, th I think it's probably better to give up the pawn than to play the pawn to f5 because at yeah. least h3 is covering d7, but still. I know queen takes f6, for example. Okay. It feels quite strong. No, it does look a bit scary still. Yeah. Oh, then we've we got rook d4. <laughs> 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 That's, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. No, I, I, it's it's uh, it's. Uh, it's uh, I think it's probably the best idea you've got. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, you know, just looking at the white position, I just sort of think you know, uh, uh, only chances for white to win here. You know, and uh, um, so I think I think we need to look for something. Probably after knight c four takes takes, we probably need to look for something better. I think. Yeah. Okay, so knight c four. We do have we have actually knight takes. Knight takes are on the board, and now Jonathan needs to think of a good move. There we go. Indeed. Why can't we just go bishop d4? You are. Could be. Could be. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's actually uh, that is actually quite reasonable. It's funny because it, uh, you, you can go knight f six check. You know that's the thing. But um, but yeah, just go king g seven, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's no. Um, uh, there's nothing, there's nothing, nothing there. Interesting. You're covering e3 as well, which is rather... Uh, yeah. Rook d8, you've got... Rook d1, yeah, you just go rook d8, I suppose. We can get bishop g4 or something like that. Maybe. Rook d8 first, maybe. Yeah, no, I just think a bishop take, rook takes d4 then might be uh, yeah. dangerous. Um, Yeah, may I don't seem to have find a way to to undermine the uh, the c five pawn. D four looks good. Bishop D four looks good. Looks solid. Quite a surprise actually, but it looks uh, it looks like uh, I'm not really sure. I don't know whether I could play Bishop C three, Queen B two, or something, and. Uh, Try and uh, get you out that way. Bishop c3. Um, so maybe I drop back. Well, yeah, then I go rook d1 probably. Back to there. Yeah, I'll go queen b2 then. I mean, I'd really love to play the brilliant queen takes e3, but um, unfortunately, bishop takes e3 is check. Hmm. I'm not sure I'm going to go rook a or rook fd1 and just try and... Uh... Yeah. Maybe you could go queen b6 simply instead of queen c7. That might just uh, help a little bit more just to, uh, to defend the pawn on d4. Yeah. And then you go, I guess, bishop h3 or something like that. And rook eight. Yeah. And we've got takes on d4 and then c5 after that sort of thing. But I think I think you just go queen a6. Hitting e hitting e2. Three. And you'll go rook d5. I mean it's a complicated position still, you know. I mean it's a very complicated position, but um because I, I don't think that oh am i wrong in that though 
Oh, I'm not sure. I mean, we could go rook takes d4 here. Uh huh. Rook takes d4. Rook takes d4. <laughs> We're going to take, I take it here. Yeah. But okay. then takes Queen e2. f6. Queen e2. Knight f6 check. King h8. Knight. Oh, then we got f, then we got f6. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, this will be good for black. I mean, I could go knight g4 check and then take on e3, but, um, you know, I mean, uh, there's just masses of compensation here, if not if not a win. f6, knight e3, but I go um, rook e8, simply. Just winning uh, there. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, it, it's a complicated position, but I think bishop d4 is uh, uh, far and away the best move that, uh, that we've looked at yet. So, uh, yeah, nice idea. Yeah. Okay. We'll leave him to leave Jonathan to have a little think about that, and um, we will look at Hebs against Marcus Harvey. Damn it! Yes. Okay. So this was oh, this that, that was our analysis. Might be eight. Let's see what they've actually done. Uh, so it went King A eight, Bishop B five, Knight D seven by Minkwitz, H three. Rook B8. Rook B8. Not Knight B8, Rook B8. Que? No comprende. That's strange, actually. Yeah. Okay, so Rook C2 then from Mark. Uh, I mean, Rook C3 is also quite interesting. I don't know. Because if you go Rook C3, then I get, you know, I'm a little bit more vulnerable to, to, uh, to various attacks and stuff. But I do get the chance to go uh, Rook C1 and Queen C2. So it could be uh, really, yeah. it could be a lot quicker, you know. Um, but okay, uh, so I'm guessing then that Marcus is going to go rook h c eight and uh, queen d six or something. I don't know. Let's see, rook h c eight. I go rook h c one. Yeah. But I don't know. If it, um, is he going to go a? He's not going to go a six, is he? Because he might do. Could be. And then after bishop takes c6, b takes c6. Well, we have to decide, don't we? I mean, we could go rook takes c6. Oh. And then uh, black gets uh, two two rooks for the queen. So just queen takes? Yeah, just queen takes, rook takes. Rook takes. And then queen um, wherever d1 maybe. Not sure. Feels like Black's got a lot of counterplay to me. You think so? Yeah. Do do you not? Uh, so for example, like bishop a3 and rook c4. I don't know what order. So say say rook c4 first. Who put me? Oh. Hmm. All right, I go King A one just to be uh, for safety. Just to be safe. Never sure about these uh, two rooks against queen positions. No. Um, I find them quite difficult to uh, to evaluate. I'm not sure. I mean, I, I go B three. I have the feeling that I can just sort of emerge a little bit, if you know what I mean. But but maybe maybe I just go back rook c six or something. It's uh, clever. And then yeah. if b three, then I'll, I'll I'll go bishop a three. That's the idea. Just want to try. If we're going back again, then that suggests my rook c four probably wasn't the best move. Uh, no, well, no, not necessarily. Uh, just uh, I mean, his king's on a one now, so. Um, I'm not sure. Just uh, I, I just want to meet B three with Bishop A three. That's the thing, you know. And uh, okay. if that happens, then I'm um, I'm kind of uh, 
it's kind of difficult to uh I, mean, I could play a3 with white i mean if it, yeah to play b4 afterwards maybe i'm not sure i'm really not sure about uh it's um um i find these always easier to play with the queen simply especially when you've got a black king that's a little bit open and um yeah. and uh you know pawns you'll be able to go e4 at some stage and you'll, you'll get some targets you know on, on on both sides somehow so i prefer to be white in this position but it's not i, I, I agree it's not uh, uh like completely clear okay let's see what's happened with uh ravi and tamas so we saw tamas um avoiding a repetition yeah, so actually, uh, they played the line that we expected there, b6. Queen b4 played. Okay. So queen takes b4. A takes b4. Bishop b7. Bishop b5. King e7. Yeah. Yeah. So we're getting into a rook and minor piece endgame. Um so, yeah, I mean the big problem with that knight on a4 is so uh, is so bad. Yeah, um, and White can't really create a pass pawn, can he? I suppose nah, neither. Yeah, this is this is quite nice for Black. I mean, in terms of French endings, this is pretty reasonable for Black. You know, uh, we've got some ideas like d4 anyway. You know, to yeah, uh, d4, uh, and because that hits g2, but also it could isolate like. Both of White's B pawns and the D pawn would be backwards. So even as a pawn sack, it might be good. Yeah, no, that's true. And I mean, uh, you know, you're going to play F6 or, or even play, you know, play Rook G8 and go for G5 simply. You know, it's, uh, um, yeah, I mean, White's pieces are all wrong. You know, I mean, the Knight on A4 is, is really bad and it's going to cost White. Um, I mean, first of all, White's going to have to um, uh, spend a, a number of tempi, you know, at the very least two Knight moves. Uh, to get it back into some sort of play, and also you'll have to play b3 to play. Yeah, knight. I was thinking, how do you even do it? Yeah, because b3 <laughs> and then the c pawn's weak. Yeah, we should we can just see. So I mean, it's all you know. It's just an unsatisfactory French position for white. So uh, you know, and I, I mean, there's positions like this that much you know where white's pieces are way better placed, and they're still okay for black, sort of. You know, so uh, I, th I think you know if anyone's better, I think that black's better here. So I'd, I'd expect to plan with F6 or G5, something like that, you know, and uh, yeah, I mean, good chances for uh, for black, I think. Yeah, and white does have to, white can't just ignore the white, the knight being on A4 and just play with the rest of the pieces. No, I don't think so. I mean, uh, it's just not going to do anything. Yeah. It's, it's even blocking any pressure that white might have against the A7 pawn, so, you know. Yeah. I think... Uh, so no, you're gonna I, have... I think Black's very comfortable here. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. It's a slightly strange move. Okay. So uh, yeah, no, I, was, I was sort of expecting Bishop B seven or something like that, but um, uh, because in this position you could go um, Bishop G three and hit the rook on B eight. But the idea then is to play Knight takes C four. Knight takes here. Yeah. So Bishop B eight, we've got Knight takes D two. Mm, pardon me. And that better be recaptured, and then we take on b8. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, that's just winning uh, material for uh, for black. So that's the reason to get away with it. So knight e4, knight e4. Then you'll move your rook probably back to a8 or something, and then your next move will be bishop b7, which you know black got nothing to complain about there. Yeah. So actually, yeah, White went ninety five in this position, but um, I think we're we're kind of going to end up heading for um, just for massive exchanges, really. 
Yeah, so if, if black takes on e5, the pawn structure is now kind of symmetrical again. That's right, yeah, that's right. But I'm just wondering a little bit. So... Uh, so I guess knight takes e5. We'll go d takes e5. And then I, I take on e4 with the knight. And then you've got to go bishop e7. So I mean, I could go queen takes d2 even. Aha, queen takes d2. Stupid. Queen takes c4. Bishop b7. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, it looks, you know, it looks fine for black this. I mean, um, uh, we've got a, a nice active queen. We'll hit the, the bishop on the eighth, and then we'll have some queen g5s after, you know, once the bishop moves away. So um, that doesn't look bad. But I mean, also, I mean, just queen takes c7 as well is fine. I mean, uh, it just occurred to me that you, I could even take on d2 there. I mean, yeah. yeah. It could be opposite bishops. Um, so, and black would be a would have some pressure down that long diagonal. I guess it's easy to defend though with the queen. You can't really build up a big. Well, you'd be either side would build up a big attack by getting the rook in as well. Yeah, and I mean black's going rook c eight, and then I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think uh, I don't think I think blacks you know these positions always feel that this. Uh, these are, I, you know, I've had quite a few of these from Queen's Gambit Acceptance and stuff, and mm. uh, I always felt that the light square bishop was quite good in these positions. Because, uh, mm. I mean, attacks g2, whereas the, the bishop on e7 with that pawn on e5, it ends up going to d6, which is fine, but it doesn't, you know, it's not... Yeah, really you want to, like, go Queen g4 and bishop f6, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, but you're not you're not going to get that, I don't think. Well, say so you did try. So you went to here. You could try. Got to try. Because the rook's on priest, so you've got a chance. No, you're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. Um, that is true. Okay, I will. We'll go rook c8 then. We'll uh, see how that looks. Oops, sorry. Uh, rook c8. And then we have to try. We'll go yeah, there. and then g6. Yeah. Okay. So then we want to get a rook in for white. So we'd have to do that like this, I guess. Indeed. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Queen B2, Queen B2 maybe? Yeah. And then we have to, yeah, so we're sacrificing now. So, but okay, not my pieces. Oh. Yeah, then we go Rook C1, I think. Oh. Uh, Yeah. Maybe rook. What about if we go rook there? Yeah. Uh, but you still go rook c1. That's what I'm a bit afraid of, yeah. Um, or even bishop a6 first. A um, little bit worried about, about that. Yeah, it's rook c1. Wait, rook c1. wait, 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 wait. So what if um, what if I go here? Okay, king h. Oh, and you want to go? Oh, okay, that's sneaky. I'll probably go g5. I think actually, that will probably be the uh, the thing to do. Because you wanted to go king h7, rook d3. That was the idea. But I could go rook c3 mm. as well, maybe. Oh no, rook d7. No, he can have seven. That would have been very dangerous. Yeah. Actually, maybe, maybe from that point of view, maybe queen h4 simply is very strong. So all right, uh, queen h4. Oh, uh, sorry. After here, go queen h4. Yeah. yeah. This isn't bad, is it? No, this is uh, this looks very strong. King h7. Yeah. King h7. Well, I can go rook d7 anyway. And then you'll need to go. Um, you'll need to go. Uh, no, I'm uh, playing the white side. You'll need to go rook f8. <laughs> Fair enough. I'll need to go rook f8. <laughs> uh, um, 
I could go rook c1 as well, actually. That may be interesting. Would rook c1 be interesting? Maybe rook c1 would be interesting instead of rook f8, actually. But, um, yeah, uh, I mean, just to, just in general, just to go back to bishop e7, 16 bishop e7, um, we could also just take on, take on e7, which wouldn't be so bad. Yeah, that might be the thing, mightn't it? That might be more sensible. Because um, knight e4, I go bishop b7. Um, you go knight d6, I go bishop d5. Oh, let's go knight d6, though. I don't know. All right. I'll go bishop d5, and I'll go f6 to try and uh, remove you. Yeah, so I wouldn't go knight d6 then. Ah, oh, okay. You know, just try and bring a rook in again. <laughs> See what happens. <laughs> or if I went... Um, Queen g4 again, but then you can just take, and that's... I can always take on e4 if I want to, but it's, 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 less, dangerous, it? it's less dangerous than with a bishop, really. So, all right, I just go I just go rook e1. And maybe not there, because you're going to take my rook on f1 at a nasty moment, aren't you? Yeah, I, mean, I, th I, don't, think, I don't think this is anything special for uh, for white, you know. Yeah. I think it's just, uh, just equal, so, yeah. I mean, there's some chances for some more risks, but maybe, uh, maybe as it turns out, those risks, those uh, that queen d2 is just more risky for um, uh, for black than for uh, than for white. I mean, I could, I, uh, I suppose, I could have gone instead of bishop b7, I could have gone rook e8, maybe possible as well. But um, but okay, you know, I mean, um, I think. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, White's not really playing for uh, uh, you know a serious advantage there at the moment. It's, uh, I think it's uh, we're looking more to draw. Pretty there. equal, right? Yeah. Okay. Next one, uh, Matty T against Jonah Willow. So uh, Black went Queen E seven. Spending quite a lot of time here, Queen E seven. Queen b3 and then rook d8. And rook c1. Yeah. Black still got, you know, Black still hasn't really solved the problem of developing his light squared bishop, really. It's true. Um, so, yeah, I don't like this development as much, you know. Um, but I guess you could try something like, uh, you could be a bit careful. I was going to say rook b8. But then actually knight takes d5 could be, um, or has some, you might have some concerns, because rook takes d5 allows rook c6. With the rook on b8 being loose. Yeah. So, I mean, you could go e takes d5. I mean, that's not so um, not so terrible. I mean, you still got the same. Still go there. Well, I've got queen takes e2. That was what I was thinking about. Yeah. Uh... Um, maybe after b takes c6, but it's not. Well, I don't know. Rook e1, actually. This is one. It looks quite nice for white, actually, doesn't it, really? Yeah. So, yeah, probably not, not the sort of thing you'd uh, you'd want to do. So, okay, so rook b8 is not... Uh, okay. But then, uh, uh, it's just a little bit irritating. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, I don't... Could you do that? I was wondering about playing bishop d7, actually. Um, because the idea is knight d5, e d5, the, 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 the bishop on e2 is hanging. You know, that's always the uh, the tactic. I mean, you could go queen b7 then. And then the question is, can we trap that white queen? We can, we're sort of vaguely close to it, which is why I was thinking about it. But um, yeah, I mean, I think we're close enough. We can go rook db8. Knight takes d5. E takes d5. Queen c7. And then just rook c8. If you move away, then I've got queen takes c2. Yeah. 
so you have to you know at the very least you have to keep on uh hooking on my um on my uh bishop on d7 i mean there might be something better for for uh, there might be a, a a clever way of even winning a piece now for black but at the very least we've yeah. got a, you know we've got a draw so i mean it's not uh it's not something that you could consider so if you can, yeah. bishop d7, if you can play bishop d7 then that might be the the best thing to do and then knight takes d5 e takes d5 and then afterwards you move your bishop out to g4 yeah you know well, it's nothing uh it's nothing amazing really so that would be my um that would be my thought for uh um you know for uh for black just to get that bishop on there uh, on c8 developed yeah and then black black black's all right i mean you know fine, black's, isn't it? yeah black's fine okay they haven't played any more moves so let's see the next one So Andrew Greet, Jonathan Blackburn. Was this fascinating game? Okay. Oh, my, uh, oh no, no, this was what this was, our line. this was our line. Where did, oh, leave it? Where did, did he go? Bishop d4 was what we were wondering if he was going to do. He did. Yeah, so it went knight takes e4. Yeah. And he did play this move we were looking at bishop d4. Bishop d4 and rook d1. Rook d1. Yes. And we were talking. We maybe didn't do look at exactly this. I, yes. I think we were, we were looking at bishop c3, weren't we? We, we yes. were looking at going bishop c3 first of all and queen b2. That was uh, which was quite quite interesting. We we thought you know, but uh, uh, rook d1 is probably um, a little bit less flexible, but it, it could sort of lead to the same, couldn't it? Really, you know. I mean, uh, I think you know, black will go rook d8 probably. I would have thought. And then we go, um, and then we go, Bishop. Probably we could do the same idea, Bishop C three, and then try and uh, try and uh, break this open somehow with uh, Queen B two or or even B four, maybe. Who knows? So okay. So if Black tries to drop back here, yeah. So Queen B two, uh, Queen A ooh, Queen A three even is vaguely possible. Um. Looking for a sneaky bishop a5. Uh -huh. Although after bishop a5, you would go queen a6. So you might you might be trapping yourself somehow with uh, with that sort of move. Um, not hundred percent sure, but uh, yeah, that is possible. Queen b2 is possible. Uh, even I suppose b4 would be possible instead of queen a3. Which one do you want? B4. B4. Okay. So say black. Say black just takes. Okay, I'll try C five now. Oh. That looks quite awkward. That looks yeah. You'd have to are you You'd have to take, you have to take e5. Yeah. No, it does look dangerous, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, knight f6 check at least, I think. Knight f6 check. King would have to move there, I suppose. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's surviving, I think. Knight h7, king e8. Amazingly, even King G eight actually probably, but King E eight is. Uh... Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So let's just go back then. Looks like Knight F six check is not quite doing it. I mean, takes takes Knight C five is. Oh, I take some Bishop. Oh no. I'm oh, sorry, I was thinking takes on d8 and bishop f6, but you go bishop b7 then. Mm. Well, you don't have to go b4. No, but it just looked winning. Mm. <laughs> so, and what if I went, sorry, what if I went rook takes, oh, you're just, 
Yeah, okay. I'm oh, sorry, I was thinking instead of c5, I could try rook takes d4. So you're going rook d4 here. Yeah, but you'll just take b takes c3 probably. I'm going to take on c3, I think. Cause... Okay, but then I'll take on, then I'll go, do I want to play c5? Um, not sure. I'll just take on d8. Yeah, I'll have to recapture. Queen takes c3. How's this? We're going to lose our pawn on e3. Ow. <laughs> Sorry? So you said, how's that? So I said, out. Oh. Um, Have you been watching hundreds of crickets? I was following the cricket, I was following the cricket quite a lot. Um, Did you yeah, the hundred it crickets? was a mistake. I think everyone thought that too. When, when we had to get out the people right at the end. And then we took everybody back out to the boundary. And, um, and then they stayed in for like... <laughs> like the whole of the rest of the day and then then they did yeah. talk or something yeah no so um, i um i had a an early uh morning uh um well action uh, at work uh uh in for for uh um some sort of problem and uh i was doing it together with an indian guy and of course you know i was a little bit mm. uh, five o'clock in the morning yeah. but he was uh oh, very good morning to you very good morning you know it's, uh <laughs> excellent we talked about the cricket uh, the day before you know and uh and he was uh, he couldn't believe it that india had won you know it was really uh but, well uh, they were pretty heroic those tail enders it has to be said yeah i know it's excellent and their bowlers were incredible as well so i mean they thoroughly deserved to win it was a, it was a great test match it was one of you know like old-fashioned sort of uh you know you don't get that in uh in, in the limited overs cricket, you know, but these, uh, you know, heroic, uh, you know, actions, uh, you know, large try and then trying to hold on and, uh, you know, not being able to, yeah, it's really, yeah. Yeah, it was, really well, it was a bit like chess, wasn't it? It was kind of the tactics of yeah. do you hold out for a draw or do you kind of go for the win? And, and it felt like it felt to me like England was trying for the draw and it kind of backfired. Yeah, no, it's true. It's true. It was, um, it was, it was a really, it was really good to watch, you know, and, uh, Obviously, would have preferred if England had held it, but um, but yeah, no, it was uh, still good. I just felt also a bit, a little bit sad that you know Joe Root was saying, uh, you know, was interviewed and he said, yeah, I think I made some mistakes as a captain there, so I need to improve. And you know, simply he, he'd made he'd made virtually all the runs for England. You sort of thought, yeah. well, yeah, you know, maybe you didn't, maybe you weren't at hundred percent, you know, all the way through. But I think, I think we, we, we it could must have be needed... hard. Though. I know they always put the best player as captain, but I I, I wonder actually in sports because I've tried to captain a chess team, and I find it it's actually really hard to play well and captain at the same time. Yeah, I know. I think I think it's. So I actually wonder if they shouldn't just put put one of their outside fielders as captain and. Uh, and, and yeah. leave the the player they want to score everything to to get on with just playing. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, it's it's weird, isn't it? Because some some people seem to got inspired by it. I mean, actually, you know, Joe Root's done done pretty well, really. And uh, you know, Graham Gooch was another one who got uh, you know who scored enormous amounts of runs as uh, as captain. But it does, you know, intuitively, you sort of think it can't be it can't be right, really. You know, I mean, uh, yeah. you can't have somebody to 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 be responsible for all of the tactical decisions at every single point of the game. You know, and also well, he's had enough of the cricket here. He's he's going for nineteen b four. Good lord! We, yeah. Uh, so, oh, sorry, sorry. We've had developments actually in the game itself. In all this, Bishop okay. Oh, rook e one, and then um, Black actually played Bishop f five. What well, we weren't looking at? Rook, oh, sorry. What were we we were looking we were at? Looking at rook d eight. We were looking at rook d eight. Actually, yes. that's what okay. we were looking at. So Bishop f five, um, and I Bishop think. Five. Hmm. Is Schadenfreude thinking? No, he can't be thinking B4 here. He must be thinking B4. You can't do B4 here, can you? Or can you? Or maybe you can. Or can you? Or can you? Yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> that was. Uh, are you in the Rook D8 line? Possible uh, Schadenfreude, but it's actually quite a dangerous move. I'm just wondering here. Um, just, I, I mean, so I'm, I, I do want to make a mating attack, but can, can't I just play the, the, the Bishop takes D4 here? Let's look at that. Yeah, let's look at that before looking at any kind of mating attacks. Bishop d4. So uh, we could take on e4. Yeah, but then I'm going bishop c3. Taking on e3. Yeah, all right. So wait a minute. So what if we just take on, let's take on d4 then. Can I just go rook takes d4 here? And just yes. Wandering, frankly. You can. Um, what's the score? 
points, one up. I mean, the C5, I just go knight f6 check and rook d6 at the very least. So uh, you can't, you, you can't, you can't win that pawn or anything. Right. So how's this? Um, C5 must be the idea, right? Yeah, like a knight f6 check, king g7, rook d6. Let's see it on the board here. I mean, even rook d5 might might just be winning as well, actually. But, uh, I mean, uh, this is just uh, easy, obviously. And I'm so, just, gonna follow, just following up with queen b2, really, you know, so, or queen e3, you know, I mean. Uh, yeah, I don't know, it just looks, just looks winning. So, okay, um, what do we do, drop the queen back? Queen here. I I go queen c3 or something. Are you mating? Are you just going to pick up the queen if we take the queen? the queen, yeah. Yeah. Yes. All right. We've had some moves, and I think it is the moves we're thinking. Oh, no. no it's rook takes d4. Rook d4. Rook takes d4. All right. We were looking at bishop takes d4. Uh, Andrew Greet's gone rook takes d4, which was recaptured. And then knight f6, has he seen a big tactic? Knight f6 check straight away. Wow. So I guess we better, I mean, king g7 looks like the obvious hunt. Well, here. Or king G, or, yeah, king h8 is also not stupid, but um, <clears throat> let's have a look at king g7. Yeah, and presumably white's idea is just to take back. Yeah, that must be it. <coughs> So if queen d2, we've got knight d7 picking up the rook. Yeah, that would be... Well, no. no, no, no. Oh, I've, got queen, I've got queen takes d4 then. Uh, all right. So say, say this was a thought. And this is quite intriguing. So I guess I should take on D2. <clears throat> I will recapture. Take. So the big problem is that if you go something like knight D7 check, king G8, knight F8, then I go bishop C2. That's the big problem. Um, so I can't allow that. So maybe I should go, uh, can I do something like rook d1? You're just going to go rook d8, aren't you? I guess rook d8 comes next, yes. I mean, I can pick up, I can get two pawns for the exchange, I'm pretty sure. Uh, you know, I can go rook d1, rook d8, bishop c3 or something, you know. Yeah, maybe rook f d eight is better, but it, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. Um, yeah, let's do the right rook. Um, yeah, because if, if bishop c two, then I go rook takes d two, rook d two, and then knight e four check, and then take back on d two. You know that sort of thing. Here. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, slightly better for white. You know, I would have thought. It's exchange for two pawns. Exchange for two pawns. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's yeah, it is slightly better for white, you know, but, uh, but it, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, I'm sure the engines would assess this as uh, only small advantage, you know, it wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't be a big advantage, I think. 
So, you know, pleasant for white, but but not um, not winning. So we've had king g7, and then, of course, bishop takes d4. Let's yeah, okay, so queen d2 is one idea. I mean, if you go... <clears throat> um, I think it's white threatening queen e3 now. So if I go with something like rook fd8, then queen takes e3, I think, is quite uh, unpleasant. Yeah. So I think queen d2 really does look like the move. It looks like the move, doesn't it? Yeah. Such a shame you can't go knight e4 check because of... Knight e4 check, you just go queen d4. E. Yeah, such that's a shame. fine. So... so that's right. Mm, I mean, maybe there's a, you could do it even better for white. You could go... Um, you could do double check, couldn't you? <laughs> you can do double check, but you might escape to h6 or something and then, uh, well, I don't know. Yeah, well, you could just maybe just go back to g8 then. Um, I'm just wondering whether we could go, because actually after, <clears throat> after queen takes d2, which I think is probably necessary, e takes d2, knight d7 check. Um, okay, let's say King G8. Well, then we can, re yeah. I mean, I was just wondering actually about going Knight takes F8, yeah. Um, because if Bishop C2, you go Knight D7, that might be a better version, you know, of the exchange up position. Bishop that, C2 uh, is what we're going to do straight away, yeah, yeah. you know, Knight D7 here. You, this might be a better version of the exchange uh, uh, down position. So just queen? Like, yeah, just, for example, takes, takes. And uh, I'm like to go knight f6 maybe, and, uh, you know, maybe it's just uh, a bit harder for, for black at this position. I'm better organised, put it this way, with white. You know, I can go... Uh, um, or, you know, maybe I go king f2 instead of knight f6. And just, uh, you know, the black king's uh, in a little bit of uh, difficulty there. I'm just wondering, actually, after um, after knight takes f8, whether I can play rook d8 straight away. This one? Yeah, here. I can go rook d8. The cunning point being that um, um, if I can get away with this, then you can't actually uh, get your knight out at all. So after e3, I go bishop c2. Yes, yes crafty. So e3... I go bishop c2 or something, and then your knight's trapped. Well, this is just good for black, then. This is winning, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She can't do that. Um, so I think after e takes d2, I, I think you have to go rook d1. I, I, I do think... I think that's the move you have to do. But okay, then I go. Yeah, then I go rook f. This, I mean, we do get into this line. I think rook f d eight, bishop c three, and now um, yeah. I mean, you could maybe even play a five or something. I don't know. A five. Yeah, I mean, I, I just um, you, you're going to take that exchange, you know. Um, um, but then I, I'm already going to be ready with my counterplay with a4, you know, I mean, um, just to trying to swap off something, you know. Because I'm, I'm just wondering, you know, how else are you going to get the uh, pawn back but to go rook takes d2 and then knight e4 check. But then after after rook takes d2, I go rook d2, knight e4 check, maybe f6, knight takes d2, a4, and I've already got some, you know, I've already got my a pawn uh, going, uh, you know, and ready to try and exchange it. So, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think this is, I don't think this is huge at all for, um, uh, for, uh, for white. Yeah. Okay. So, so he has played. Uh, Jonathan Blackburn has played our move Queen D two. Okay, let's uh, let's yeah, check. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Um, so, Mark Hebden against Marcus Harvey. Now, this was our line, so let's see if they did those. Um, so, Rook C2. Uh, Marcus actually played a different move. He played... Oh, yeah, six right away. Okay, okay. So, Mark took on C6. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, there's a question. I mean, I even going back to, to D3 or E2 was not stupid, I think. But, um, but okay, that's a, a decent idea. Queen B7, Rook C1, Queen B5. Uh, clever. So, um, okay, so Mark had to take the queen. Takes. And then, yeah, okay, that's not bad. I mean, uh, black sort of, uh, what white's got now is um, is the, yeah, the initiative on the open C file, but. Yeah, so he doesn't move the knight. He goes straight into the seventh rank. Yep, rook d8. Yeah. Rook 1c6. Oh, that's threatening mate. Indeed, rook b7. And now, actually, uh, yes, that's a sneaky defense, actually, because rook a6 check, king b8, actually yeah. wins the piece for white. Yes. For black, rather. For black, rather. Yeah. So you've got too much hanging. So Mark has played knight c5. And how is this? Let's see. Yeah, good question. Um, well, so the threat looks, to take on a six in principle looks promising. I think for white, indeed, because the, the the point is, you know, um, uh, you've always got um, if you need to support a rook on c seven, you know, because it gets attacked by a black king or whatever, you've always got to move bishop a five now. So actually, yeah. it's very hard to, to shift a white rook from the seventh rank, which basically, you know, basically just means that it's going to be strong. Um, so this is interesting, very interesting. Mm. So, all right, I could take that knight. But how? But how? Let's say with the knight. Okay, I will take it. I'm almost thinking black should just defend along the seventh. Although you, then you take on a6, don't you? Yeah, I mean, I, I've got this. I can just take on a6. I mean, I've even got stronger, maybe even stronger ideas, right? I could go rook d7, rook c8 check. And if king a7, I go bishop a5, and I'm coming in with bishop b6. Okay, so so maybe you don't take on c5, then. Yeah, you're going to have to do something. You, yeah. The a6 one is on pre's. Yeah, and the rook on b7 is on pre's at the moment. That's the big... So, all right, so you might need to take on um, c7. Yeah, then I'll just take back with the rook. I mean, the... Hmm, Crumbalunis, I think this is, really, this is just really awful. I think this is just, this is almost maybe, maybe this is just loss for black. I hadn't expected it, but uh, I mean, how do you defend it? Hey, you do have to take that knight. Maybe take it with the bishop. Does that make right. any difference? Well, yeah, okay. That's, yeah, that's probably the best. Term, but I, I take back on c5. Oh, how about knight b8 now? Knight b8. Yeah. That looks like the best. So we can still try with our bishop onto a5, can't we? Wait, it's really nice. No, nice. Wait a minute. Wait, we can't. We can't. Um, so, we I mean, can't. I, I think, yeah. We have to take on b7, don't we? And rook b6. We'll, we'll, we'll take on b7. Yeah. So king b7. That. We go rook b6 check, I think. But white's rook might be. Nah, should be all right. Should yeah, be all right. So okay. where are you going here? Because King C seven, I might have Bishop A five. I think King. What about King A E seven? All right. Then I'm. I'm just thinking. Uh, just thinking aloud. Um, Bishop C three. Bishop C three here. And then, uh, if Knight D seven, you're going Rook D six. Yeah. Um, so if Hebs, uh, so Marcus, if Marcus goes, um, rook c8, Mm. 
So. And there's a lot of promising moves here, I have to say. I mean, rook d6 is, is quite simple, probably, because you can't take on c5 because I go uh, bishop d4. Um, yeah. I think the same. But I mean, to be honest, yeah, I mean, that's definitely one one thing that... What uh, I was thinking was... Um, uh, I mean, the thing is, once I take that pawn on g7 with the bishop, um, actually, I'm threatening to create a, an outside past h pawn with h4, g4, h5. So it doesn't feel like a, a big loss, but it, I think it is quite a it's, it's quite significant that. Um, I think Marcus shouldn't let shouldn't allow that pawn to be taken if he can avoid it. But I don't know if he can avoid it. You could play rook g8. Rook g8. But okay, I mean, this is this is quite it's quite desperate because I, I don't really know, you know, how how is Black ever going to get free, you know, because uh, if he goes King B seven, Knight C six, I go Rook D seven and pick up the F seven pawn. I go King B seven, King C seven. I can always get hit by I don't know Bishop E five or Bishop A five. So, I mean, it just looks like an, it looks just awful. It looks appalling for Black, I have to say. Yeah. So I, I think I actually think that White's just winning here. Um, yeah. nice. I'm sli slightly surprised that it's so so big, but I don't I don't actually see a, a move for Black really. So this is where we are. Um, we have to do something because our rooks on prees on b seven. Yeah, I mean, you know, the thing is, you'd, you'd want to do something like knight takes c five. D takes C five, King B eight. You know that's the sort of thing that would, you know, if, if this was a, <coughs> a, a, if this position was working, then you'd be able to do something like that. Is is my feeling? But I just got Bishop A five. That's the big problem. I suppose I could maybe go Rook E eight. But again, well, I don't know. I'm I'm, ta I'm taking on c6 and going rook c7 and then playing c7 afterwards. You know, it's just take on b7. Yeah, and then rook c7 and then c6 afterwards. And yeah, you know, I mean, Looking again, good that's, to white. That's, that's in terrible, terrible trouble again. You know, I mean, c6. c6. So. Oh, and if um, Marcus tries. That I've got rook b7, then rook b7. And king c8, I'll probably just go. I mean, I could have got many things then, but I mean, bishop b4 keeps some control as well. So, and bishop d8 is probably very strong as well. But this is, you know, okay. So, this is looking even, even, even rook a7 is very strong actually, uh, instead of bishop b4 because after king b8, I've got c7. You take oh you can't take on yeah I've got rook a8 so, right, so. Rook a8, yeah so i mean you know it's really that this is really uh yeah i think this is really very difficult for marcus yeah all right i'm a bit surprised i mean yeah because i mean all, all all you gave away i mean you, you managed to to get it to some sort of way that uh, the only thing that white got you know from the whole action was control of the c file which was great but um, you didn't think that it was going to be uh, totally disastrous straight away. But wow, you know, looks like. Yeah. OK, we will check back in on um, Thomas and Ravi, which was going towards a kind of Rook and Minor peace end game. Yeah, so um, essentially we've, um, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, oh, yeah, right. Ravi did exactly what we uh, what we thought. So mm -hmm. um, do you mind if I just grab a piece of chocolate? And, uh, yeah, well, I'm what gonna... I'm going to do, I'm actually suggesting we're going to take a five-minute break and I'll just be lovely. Uh, yeah, that would we'll be finish great. the stream and we'll be back in five minutes. Okay, thank you, everyone, for watching. Don't go away. We'll be back just in five minutes. Brilliant. See you then. Thanks. See you.